Hi guys, I am Patty Elhoff. I am the author of Upcycle with Decoupage, available on Barnes & Noble, Amazon, Scobie Books, and several online retailers. And today I'm going to show you how to make these lovely French script votives. So I will tell you exactly what we need to get started. Don't worry, I'm going to turn the lights up. I just wanted you to see how these looked with candles in them in a semi-dark room. And these are the supplies that we'll need. These are from the dollar store. Now, this looks like a glass. As a matter of fact, it was with the glasses, and I didn't know if it was a glass or a votive holder, and it doesn't matter. It was a dollar, though it gave me ideas for reusing some of the older glasses that I have around my house. You can even use a glass jar. For today, though, here's how we're going to work with these. And the first thing you want to do is you want to go to, to Etsy, the, the Etsy site, which is just www.etsy.com. And there is a site on there called Bitmap, B-I-T-M-A-P. Just put that word in the search on Etsy and then select the option to find shop names containing Bitmap. Then when you click on that item, Bitmap comes up and it tells you how many items are in the store. Click on that and you will be taken to several pages of papers. Now, this to me is fascinating as a decoupage artist. You can actually pay them for the images. You pay one price and usually within the same day they email you the prints that you bought. Now this is one that I bought here. Here's another phenomenal thing about it. Not only is the price great, and they send them to you on email, you can then enlarge or make smaller on your copier any one of these so that in essence, look at that, that's just pure French script. This one I just love with the keys on it and I enlarge that. There are places online that tell you how to do that on your printer or your computer then what you need to do is you have to go to the copy store and make copies of these. Once you make those laser copies, we're going to come on back and cut out whatever size you want. And because I'm using a napkin around the glass as well as this image, I cut it out to be the size of my glass. Then you want to take a napkin to match your print. Now, because I do decoupage, I have got napkins all over. Before we start working with the napkins, let's take some saran wrap and just rip two or three pieces before you get started. And here's how big of a size you'll need. This is to wrap around your fingertip, so you don't need that big of a piece. First we're going to decoupage the napkin to the glass. We're going to do this in sections. Now you're going to need a little bit of excess on the bottom. And obviously you'll have a lot of excess on the top, which is fine. Take our decoupage glue. It's better to work lightly rather than put too much on here. Put a little bit down here and the top. We're going to work in sections. So lay the glass down. Pull back a little bit. 
and try to keep it straight so that your napkin doesn't go off center, especially when you're using script. And so put the napkin down where you just laid the glue down. And you can pick your glass up now. I'm just pressing it where I just put the glue. Don't rub it. Just press it down. Now you want to take your saran wrap, dip it in the water, and start to press down. Now you can rub it. Rub where you laid down the decoupage glue. Now you see these wrinkles in here? That's always a trick when you're decoupaging with napkins. They tend to wrinkle. It's hard to get them out completely. But because you've still got the three ply together, you can pull on this a little bit. I mean, if you're gentle, granted, if you pull too hard, it will tear. So just be very careful. Pull on it, getting some of those wrinkles out. But pull on the dry parts. And it's pulling those wrinkles out. I don't know if you could see that okay. Still a little bit there. Be careful not to rub it. It's, uh, it's a temptation to rub it with your finger. Always just put the plastic on. So if you see some air bubbles or wrinkles you'd like to move out. Best to do this now. I'm seeing little air bubbles. Fold the top over. Still some wrinkles in there, but that's okay. This next step, I believe, really takes some of those wrinkles out. And what we're going to do is, I have an electric oven. I am not sure if this works in a gas oven, although I don't know why it would not. I turn the oven on. I put, I'm sorry, I put this in the oven and I put it on a piece of aluminum foil and then a cookie sheet. And I turn it over this way so that it's upside down. Put it on the aluminum foil on the cookie sheet. I put it into a cold oven. I set the oven to 170 degrees is when the bell rings to let me know that the oven has reached 175. I turn the oven off and I leave this in there for about 15 minutes. An air bubble. Whoop. Because that helps it dry that much faster. Now you can air dry these. There's no problem with doing that. With napkin decoupage, it seems to me that for some reason the heat causes the napkin to settle in even more and wrinkles disappear. Uh, to an extent. Not all wrinkles, but they still tend to disappear and it looks better. So I'm going to put this in the oven and I'll be back probably in about 15 to 20 minutes. Now you want to take your dried piece out of the oven and I'm thinking it took about 20 minutes for mine. I like that they're just don't seem to be nearly as many wrinkles as with napkin decoupage and I think putting it in the oven aside from the few steps we do as we're working has a lot to do with that. It causes it to sink onto the surface. Now if you've got decorative scissors, the ones with the deckled edge, you can cut that piece out with that and you'll have an even more of a decorative look. If you're going to put trim around it, you may just want to leave it as it is and then you'll just have a nice place to frame your centerpiece. These napkins are so pretty. Any way you turn this, it's going to look nice, I think. So we'll take the piece that we would like to put on the seam 
Add a little decoupage glue to that area right there. And I'm going to dip this into the water, the same bowl of water that we've been using. Now because we've made laser copies, this will not run, and we're going to line it up. And you want to press it down gently. You can use your saran wrap, or you can press it down. Just be careful not to rub it, because while it's wet, sometimes you can pull away the print. Now we're going to kill two birds with one stone. We're going to put a layer of decoupage glue over our print. And we're also going to put a layer of decoupage glue over our whole piece again. And once you have the whole piece covered, we're going to put this aside to dry. And it can go back in the oven if you'd like, or you can let it air dry. I'm more concerned with oven drying during the first step. After the second layer of decoupage glue is dry, first we'll want to go around the outside edges, just of the top, with this nail file. I am using a product called Triple Thick that is a very high gloss product, but I use it as a glue when I'm applying glitter or mica. So at this point, I'm going to sprinkle a little bit on. I've just applied the top coat. I've just applied the triple thick. Sprinkling a little bit of this on there. Give you a close up. I strongly suggest you do not put this in the oven. This part does need to air dry. So I'm going to let this dry. Now we're just going to add the piece of felt. And you can get cork, you can get felt, anything with an adhesive on it that you can put on the bottom of this. And once that's on, we can add the trim. And I'm going to start that just to show you what I'm doing. Just use a thin bead of this. A little bit goes a long way, and I actually get a little bit started up at the tip here, and then I just stretch it. And there is our finished French script votive for today. That's how it looks around the sides. There's our white rose. You can see the high gloss the mica. Let's see with the light off. Down. Off. That's got a lit candle in it right now, so you can see it's throwing off a little bit of a nice soft amber hue. So I hope you enjoyed our video today. Go ahead over to my website to check out where you can get some of those papers. There's also several other videos on my YouTube channel here, Patio Elf. Thank you so much again for subscribing, for commenting, for keeping me motivated. And if you got any questions, please feel free to ask me. I'm all too happy to help out. And just use your creativity. There's so much you can do with these prints, these napkins. Etsy, my website, my videos, and I'll see you next week with a new video, guys. Thanks again. Bye-bye.